Good morning, fellow gardeners. We're in the greenhouse again this morning with the tomatoes, and we want to talk about the different kinds of tomatoes. There's determinate tomatoes, indeterminate tomatoes, and then there is dwarf bush tomatoes. So we'll talk about those kinds. The, in, the determinate tomatoes, they're a short growing, heavy producer, kind of all at one time. So we use a lot of determinates here because it gets hot here in July and August. And when a tomato gets above 94 degrees, it's going to quit setting. The blossoms will quit setting on the, on the vine and we'll lose those blossoms and we can't set any tomatoes. So we try to get ours in early in the spring. We get ours in February, to tell you the truth, what we try to do. Now this year, Mother Nature kind of pushed it on us and we didn't get in until the, the first, earlier part of March. But anyway, these determinates, this is determinate tomatoes here. They're only going to get oh, anywhere four or five or six feet tall, something like that. Now if we were growing a indeterminate, it could go eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 feet tall. It's according to how long we keep it growing. Okay, we're gonna go back to this determinate tomato. We're gonna to leave it as a bush. All of these suckers that come on this plant, we're gonna leave on. We're not taking anything off of it. We might take a few leaves off the bottom when they start showing a little discoloration. But anyway, you can see this plant has bushed out a lot of different suckers. There's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen or sixteen different stems coming up here that's making blooms. You can see blooms on every one of them. That's okay. We want a heavy load. Get them on there before it gets hot. Get them set. Get them to maturing and getting, they can go ahead and get ripe even after it gets 94 degrees. But you have to have them, the blooms pollinated and the little tomatoes set on there before it gets 94 degrees in the summertime or you're not going to get many tomatoes. There is a little exception to that. The cherry tomatoes, the romas, and the grape tomatoes, they will make better for you in the hot weather than your regular slicing tomatoes will. Okay, so uh, anyway, we're growing these as a bush type deal so to speak we're not going to vine them up a string we're going to come in here and we're going to put stakes every fourth plant and we're going to take baler twine and we're going to go around this plant back around this one back around to that one to the stake and we'll come back on the other side and what we essentially make is a figure eight one string's going this way and one's going that way they cross and go around that way and back around to the stake and just on and on and then after about two weeks We'll come back in here, this plant will be grown a little more, and we'll start another string and do the same thing. We'll go on both sides of this plant, hold it up, cross it, go over the side of this one, cross it, go over that one, cross it to a stake, tie around it, and keep going. What this does, this keeps these plants up in a vertical position to so your tomatoes do not lay down on the ground cover or on the ground because when they touch that ground, they will rot. They, it's hard to get a good tomato off of the ground that's touching the ground. So we want these vines standing up so the tomatoes are hanging off, off of the into the air and not laying on the ground. Now we're going to talk about indeterminate. Okay, now we've moved over into another one of the houses that we have tomatoes in. And this is still growing determinate tomatoes. We don't want them to touch the ground. We want the tomatoes to be up in the air so they won't rot on the ground. Now, what I've done here, I've set that same self-wicking bucket up on a barrel, a 55-gallon barrel. You can fill it full of water to hold it stable for you and not let the wind blow it over. We come up here on top of this same self-wicking bucket that we use on all the rest of them. And if you can see, we have four tomato plants I'm going to try to divide them out. There's four tomato plants, two over there on this side and two back here on this back side. And what we're going to do, we're going to let these just grow up as a bush, let all the suckers come on it, and as these plants come up and get these blunt blossoms on them, and then they make fruit, and as that fruit grows, it's going to push this 
plant, make it b turn over the side like this. Now, a lot of people said, oh, but you're going to break that plant right there where it goes over it. Trust me, in the last eight or ten years, I haven't had three or four plants crack and break. But that plant will go ahead and heal and keep growing. You won't lose your tomatoes. I've never, I don't know of a time that I've lost my tomatoes to one breaking plum off and falling on the ground. So they're pretty tough. But anyway, we're just going to let these hang over the side. And these plants, as they lean over the sides now, these suckers that's coming up right here, we're going up here and fill the center out. You'll have tomatoes up on here. You'll have tomatoes hanging off of the tubs right on down towards the ground. Now, what I try to use is a determinant tomato that won't get over about four to five feet. Uh, we, used, we started out using uh, regular early girls and they would get to all the way to the ground and then even lay down on the ground some. So the next year we went to a early dial, dial, D-O-L-L, -L, early dial and it made it just about to nearly to the ground. The only thing I had against the early dials, they make a tomato about the size of a tennis ball. Well, most of my customers wants a tomato the size of a slice of bread where they can cut one slice and put it on a sandwich and that's all they have to do. I hope they don't eat that thing all at one bite. But anyway, uh, you know, I don't mind taking a smaller tomato and cut three slices and put it on a sandwich and it's fine with me. I still have to chew it up in bites. Is that for lunch today? Well, we might try a tomato <laughs> sandwich for lunch and cheese or something or other. Anyway, uh, we have switched from early dial now. We went to a one is called Red Douche, D-E-U-C-E. -E. It only grows about four feet tall, puts on large tomatoes, and it is a heavy producer. So we use that. Now, the seeds are rather expensive. You may have to pay anywhere from 60 cents to 90 cents a piece for the seeds, unless you buy large quantities, because these seeds are expensive. But let's face it, and what if you had to pay 75 cents for a seed? And it makes lots and lots of big tomatoes. One tomato, you get your money back. So it's not like, you know, you're robbing the bank or, or breaking the bank. But anyway, this, this is the easiest way to grow tomatoes there is. It's in a container, up on a barrel, and just let them hang over the sides. Kind of like a hanging basket. Uh, kind of like that topsy-turvy they came out with. And... Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with using topsy-turvies. The only thing I got against it, it's just too small a container for me to grow good tomatoes in. So that's the reason I use this bigger tub and just let them hang over the sides and they're going to hang down just like a topsy-turvy. Now we're over in a house of, of indeterminate tomatoes. Now these are the tomatoes that will grow 12, 15, 20 feet. I've seen some people keep their houses cool in the summer and warm in the winter and they'll go 18 to 20 months with the same tomato vines, and I've seen them 30 foot tall. Now they have to, they don't grow them straight up 30 feet, but they keep letting the tomatoes down and wrap them around in a roll, or either let this roll go this way and up, and that can go this way and up. I'm gonna show you how you do these tomatoes to get them ready to start what we call straying up a string. Okay, these are in the temperature tomatoes. Now these are actually cherry tomatoes. Uh, these are sweet 100s, okay? We're going to take a plant here that I haven't done anything to. We're going to come in here. You can see we have a, a, a hand of blossoms right here. We're going to take all of the leaves below that first hand of blossoms off. You don't need that. We're going to take those leaves off. If I'm stout enough to get it off, it should come off there. There it goes. And then we're going to come up here. Now, we're going to leave that leaf right there by that set of blossoms. You see right above that leaf, there is a sucker, what we call a sucker. It's just another limb of tomatoes that will make tomatoes, I believe it on there, but you're gonna get such a mess, mixed up so many here, you can't find your tomatoes. So we're gonna take that sucker off, leave the leaf on. We're gonna come up the stem to the next leaf, and there's a sucker right above it we're gonna pinch off. We come on up to the next leaf, and guess what? There's another sucker right there and guess what I did? I just broke off that other hand of blooms that was right up there, so I messed up a little bit, but maybe they won't fire me over doing that. Now we come up here to the next leaf, and here's another sucker. 
and we take it off. Now then, we come on up a little further, and you can see there's your next hand of blooms right there. I'm going to take this little sucker off. We don't want it. Now we've got one, one single stalk that we're going to keep growing and let the leaves stay on it with the fruit. Now, as this fruit gets on there and matures, starts maturing, start turning nearly ripe, still green, we'll take some more of these leaves off to get them out of the way so the sun can get to those tomatoes and turn them red like we want them. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to this one here. Now, this is, I've already took all this the suckers off except I did I missed the two on top there's a little one here's another sucker right above that leaf that sucker is always always right above the leaf now you notice I've took the leaves off up to my bottom blossoms here's one hand of blossoms two hands of blossoms and here's my third hand already started on here and here's my fourth hand already started in the top so by the time this plant gets this tall I'll have four hands of tomatoes on this plant now, to, to hold this up straight, because we don't want it laying down, we don't want it on the ground, so what we do, we tie either tie a knot around the bottom of the plant, a loose knot where it, won't, it doesn't slip, tie it loose, or either you can stick a stick in the ground and tie it to it, and then you're going to start winding this string along under the leaves as you come up. You try to always get close or right under that blossom hand, if you can, to help hold it up. We come right on around and wind up again. You have to do this about twice a week to stay ahead of the game. If you don't, this thing will grow and it'll be, you got two foot of pruning and a wrapping uh, if you let it go for a week or 10 days. And so this is what it's gonna hold it up, just like into that. We're gonna hook this string on top on a rope up here that's going um, horizontal to the, through the house and we'll just hook that up on there. And that's what that plant will sit there and do and you can see how easy it will be to get to all those cherry tomatoes just hanging on that single stem. This takes a lot of work. That's the only problem. That's the only downside I have to this is all the work that's involved. But if you're just growing a few tomatoes and you have time to do it, then it's okay. It's just grow it like that. And that's growing up a string, indeterminate tomatoes.